Hi there, my name is Chelsea Siebert. Welcome to The Smart Student. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a demonstration of how to make this PowerPoint presentation right here, starting from scratch and formatting it under APA 7th edition. Now, fair warning, this is a longer tutorial. The reason being is that there are very limited resources out there on presentations under APA formatting. So this presentation in particular was created to cover most of the scenarios that you'll run into. But with no further ado, let's get started. All right, friends, two quick disclaimers before we get the ball rolling. And the first one is that there is a lot of ambiguity when it comes to creating an APA PowerPoint. The reason being is that there is no official rule book for what that actually means. So what I've done is I've contacted the APA Association to clarify a few formatting questions. So just keep in mind that what I'm showing you today, a lot of it is gonna be my suggested best practices, but I'll let you know what is a hard rule from the APA Association versus what is my recommendation. Second disclaimer, because of that, if your professor gives you any specific guidelines to follow, follow theirs first and foremost and not mine. But anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the basic formatting principles. So first things first, every APA PowerPoint is going to be made up of three parts. You have your title slide, body slides, and reference slide. Think of the title slide and reference slide as the end caps to the body portion of your presentation, kind of like an APA paper, which I'll make a quick note right here. If your presentation presentation is supposed to be 10 slides long, please know that your title slide and your reference slide don't count towards those 10 slides. You're going to need to create 10 slides of body slides in order to meet that count. Bummer, I know. When it comes to formatting, what you need to remember is that an APA PowerPoint is APA formatting with some flex room for creativity. So in other words, you're free to make your presentation visually stimulating. However, the information posted on each slide should be presented clearly, concisely, nicely, consistently, and credited. We're gonna get into what all that means as we go through the example, but so you're not lost, I'm setting up this presentation in different phases rather than slide by slide so I can explain points that are relevant to each phase. But with that little bit of understanding, let's go ahead and jump into my computer now. I'll see you on the other side. Hey everyone, welcome to my computer. The first thing you're gonna do is pull up a blank presentation. Now, I know that most of your PowerPoints are gonna correspond with a written assignment, so that that's how I'm going to teach you here. So for this PowerPoint, here's my paper that I'm going to be making the PowerPoint off of. Now my pro tip for you here when you're getting started is I recommend creating a separate reference list specifically for your PowerPoint. The reason being is that the references you use in your PowerPoint probably aren't going to be all of the ones that you used in your paper. And also, if you add in any graphics or tables, you're going to have to cite that in your PowerPoint, which again will create references that aren't used on your paper. So I suggest setting up a blank document just like this to keep track of the references you use in your PowerPoint. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Here's your blank presentation. The first thing you're gonna do is start with the title slide. When it comes to formatting your title slide, the one thing you need to remember is that it follows the exact same formatting is an APA title page. So I'm actually gonna pull up this example again so you can see what I mean. Basically, what this means is that the exact information that's on your title page is what you're going to include on your title slide. So under APA 7th edition, your title slide is gonna contain the name of your project, your name, your affiliation, your course information, your professor's name, and your due date. Even though you're using the same information as your title page, I don't recommend copying and pasting it into your PowerPoint because that's gonna be more formatting you have to do later. And speaking of formatting, I'm gonna make a quick note about font size and type. Under APA formatting, your font size and type needs to be legible and large enough for your viewer to view your PowerPoint. Personally, I recommend using the default because again, that's gonna be less formatting you have later. But I'll explain that near the end. But now let's go ahead and move on to the body slides. So just like how you'd create an outline for your paper before writing, I recommend outlining your presentation by setting up the amount of slides you need first. I'm gonna add in four body slides, one for each section of my paper. If I need to break a slide into two slides, I'll do that later on while I'm adding in the content, but for now, I suggest just creating the bare bones to your presentation. Each body slide in your presentation is made up of three parts. You have the heading, the body, and the notes section. Your headings will go in the heading box up top right here. 
And when you're creating your PowerPoint outline, I suggest having your slide headings correspond with the section headings of your paper like this. Awesome, now that I'm finished with the outline of my PowerPoint, I'm gonna go back through and fill in the body sections of each slide. I'm gonna speed up my screen while I do this, but so you understand, let me explain what I'm doing. I'm adding in the rough content for each slide, kind of like a rough draft. When you do this, there are a few formatting principles that you're gonna wanna follow. So one, you're gonna list out your main ideas using a bullet point format. This means that you're not going to be using complete sentences, but sentence fragments. I like to think of them as idea fragments. You want to capture your idea in a short, concise fragment that would give your viewer an idea of your points. Since they're fragments, you're not going to include any punctuations like a period unless you're using a direct quote. All bullet points should follow the same pattern, so it doesn't matter if you use sentence case or capital case. What matters is that you remain consistent throughout the entire PowerPoint. My pro tip for you is that I recommend using sentence case because there's less to capitalize, meaning there's less to format later. Awesome. Now that the rough content is filled in on your body slides, you have the full bare bones of your presentation set up. Now is a good time to go ahead and set up the design. I suggest doing it now because you can start to visualize your presentation coming together. This is going to help you spot places that need more content, need to remove content, or maybe you need a graphic and so on. There are two ways that you can set up the design for your PowerPoint. The first one, you can select the basic design templates from the toolbar at the top right here. These design templates from the toolbar will format your entire presentation using the same design like this. Your second option is a more advanced option where you would choose your template using the design ideas icon right here. I actually recommend using the design ideas because it allows you to choose your design per slide, which gives you more flexibility. And honestly, they make for a more visually pleasing PowerPoint. I'm going to go ahead and choose this dark blue here because it's Amazon's branding colors. As you can see here, when I go to the next slide, the design ideas automatically recommends different design options for me, which is really cool. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this part of the screen while I choose design templates for each slide. I'll see you back in a sec. Awesome. Now that we have the basic design set up, I'm going to go back through each slide and add in extras where it's needed. Quick note on extras. If it's a graphic table or a figure that you found from another source, meaning you got the photo from online, you're going to need to create a citation for it. Now, if that graphic, say a clip art or stock footage was found within PowerPoint, you don't need to create a citation for it. I'm going to go through an example of each one so you understand what I mean. All right, starting with the title slide, everything looks good in terms of space but I'm going to remove these bullets because this is not a list of sentence fragments and I'm going to center the text because that's just looks a little nicer. Now moving on to the first slide and the body slide, this looks pretty good as well. There's really no space for me to add any more text or graphics. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one, which is the vision statement. So this slide is looking pretty bare to me. There's a lot of dead space in it. So this is going to be a good one to add an image to. For this scenario, I go online, I find a photo that I really like. So I'm going to copy it and paste it into my slide. When I do this, I want you to take note how the design ideas here repopulate new options to fit this graphic into your slide. I actually like the formatting of the current design I have, so I'm just going to move stuff around here to fit the image on the slide like this. Here we go. And that looks pretty nice. So like I mentioned before, if you find your graphic online, you're going to need to create a citation for it. And the correct way to do this is to first create a full reference list entry for your reference list and then a corresponding copyright attribution, which will be included as a general note underneath the figure. That copyright attribution is a figures version of an in-text citation. If you need help with how to create those, I suggest watching this video over here. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and add in a text box and copy and paste the note for time's sake here. Now this next slide is looking pretty bare as well, so I'm going to insert a graphic this time from within PowerPoint. As you can see here, you have a lot to choose from between the smart art and the chart options, but for this one, I'm going to insert a pie chart to demonstrate the three different points that are made in the mission statement. So I'm going to insert it into my slide and then type in the text that I want to go in each section. As you can see here, PowerPoint automatically adjusts my font size so that it fits within the graphic, which is pretty cool. Now it's just a matter of moving things around on the slide until things look nice. What's nice is PowerPoint will show you spacing lines which are great to use as a guide. Lastly, you might want to correct any spelling mistakes like I did right here, 
but overall this slide is looking good. I will note that since I created this graphic within PowerPoint, that means that I don't have to create a citation for it. Now this next slide is looking pretty bare as well. So for this one, I'm gonna insert a stock image from within PowerPoint. So I'm gonna come up here, select stock images, and they're gonna load some options for me. What you're gonna need to do is play around with a few keywords to find images that are relevant to your slide. As you can see, the first one didn't work, but the second one does, and I like this blue one of the buildings, so I'm gonna insert it into my slide. But this time, rather than readjust the image to fit in the design, I'm gonna look at the design ideas to see if I find a new one that I like. And I do, I like this one right here, so I'm gonna click on it, and now this slide is complete. The one thing I'm gonna note is that even though this is a stock image, since it was found within PowerPoint, that means I have the license to use it without having to create a citation. All right, we're looking good. The next phase is to go back through and add in your presenter notes and your citations. Now, each slide should contain your presenter notes, which are gonna be located at the bottom in the notes section right here. In these notes, you're gonna flush out your bullet points into full set. And the way you're going to format them is you want to include your notes in a similar formatting to your paper, meaning that the text should be included in full paragraphs like you see it is here, included with the in-text citations. Now your text does not need to be double spaced like it would be in your paper, single spacing is fine. If you need help with in-text citations, by the way, go ahead and check out this video up here. Now, I'm gonna make a quick disclaimer. I'm copying and pasting the text from my paper into my slide notes. You do not wanna do the same thing. You're gonna create your notes based off your presentation, not by copying and pasting them from your assignment. The reason I'm doing that right here is simply so you can see how the formatting looks. Now that the notes are included for each slide, let's go back through and add in the citations on the actual slides. And the way I like to include citations on the slides is by placing them after the last bullet point. This is something I recommend. This is not from the APA Association, but for example, in this first slide, what I mean is that these bullet points are paraphrased from three different sources. So rather than put a citation after each bullet point, what I like to do in this scenario is use the formatting for citing more than one study at a time like this. I'll adjust the text box if I need to so the citation fits while keeping the font consistent. Moving on to the next slide, the figure is already cited from before, but their direct quote is not. So I'm gonna follow the same formatting rules for a direct quote just like this. Please note how I'm including a period after the second parenthesis because that direct quote is a full sentence. Now, this next slide, we have a combination of both direct quotes and bullet points. So I'm simply gonna combine the two methods here. I'm gonna create the direct quote citation for the direct quote like this. And again, note how I'm including a period because it's a full sentence. After that, I'm gonna create an in-text citation for these bullet points. They all come from the same source, so I'm just gonna create a normal in-text citation like this. Moving on to this last slide, these bullet points are paraphrased from two sources. So again, I'm gonna use the same formatting of citing more than one study together like this. The last thing you're gonna do is create your reference slide. Now, if you've created a separate reference list page for this, this is gonna be very easy to do. But the first thing is you're gonna come up here and insert a new slide. By default, this slide is gonna have a header box and a body text box. I recommend deleting the header box and expanding the body text box like this. From here, go ahead and type out the word references, remove the bullet points, center it, and bold it just like you would if this were a paper. Great, now let's bring up the reference list sheet and you're simply going to copy and paste these into your slide. As you can see here, we have a little bit of formatting to do. So again, go ahead and highlight these, remove the bullet points, and now we're gonna set the hanging indent. The easiest way to do this is to use the icon here from the ruler. If you don't see your ruler, you can click view and then make sure the ruler box is clicked but we do see it. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the bottom portion of this icon and drag it in one half inch. And just like that, it's formatted with a hanging indent. The last thing you're gonna do is format the line spacing. There are no official rules for a PowerPoint slide. You can use anywhere from one up to two. You just wanna make sure that it looks nice. So if I click one, that looks pretty good. Let's see what 1.5 looks like. Mm. As you can see, that makes my text look pretty small, so I'm gonna stick with one. Now, quick note, 
Let's say you have a lot of references, more than I have here. What I recommend doing is coming up here to new slide and duplicating this slide because it's going to keep your formatting. You can simply delete these references and then paste in the additional ones you have. Again, having that reference list makes this very easy to do. But I'm going to go ahead and remove that slide and voila, we're pretty much done guys. The last thing you would do is go through and make any formatting changes that you want to. I recommend going through and making sure that all your titles are consistent and your text is consistent. As you can see here, this title is only 40 while this one is 44. So I might change this one up to 44 to see if it fits because again, in APA PowerPoint is all about being consistent. All right, here we are. As you can see, you have a beautiful, professional looking PowerPoint presentation that follows APA formatting. If you have any specific questions that I didn't cover in this video, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below or join my Smart Student Facebook group. You can ask questions there also. Now, just so you know, the next video I'm creating corresponds with this one because I'm gonna make a video about how to give a PowerPoint presentation virtually over something like Zoom. I know a lot of you who are in online courses struggle with giving the presentation virtually, so I'm going to give you some tips and best practices for that. But anyways guys, if you're still here right now, thank you so much for watching this presentation. I know it was a long one, so your support means everything to me. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, share it with your friends if it'll help them, and of course subscribe to this channel for more videos like this every week. Thank you.